Well, hello. Welcome again to the 2012fad.com. I will be your host for this evening, and my name is Charlie Blue Hawk. Last night, we talked about how to plan and how, with a very small amount of effort, you can figure out what you will need in the future to make you happy, to give you those little pleasures you have today and that you would like in the future that you take for granted. Things like cigarettes, coffee, sugar, ham, chocolate, steak, leather clothes, woolen socks, a good book, a light to read by, music, movies, and, you know, good friends, good lovers to live for. And so tonight, I thought we might chat about culling our own herds and how the village is really a way to cull ourselves. How, well, the best way, I'm trying to think of a way of saying preserve what is best in the human condition, but as I think we've lately discovered, you and I are not human. We're not people. We're mutants. We're the 2% that are not human beings, because apparently human beings require the threat of immediate violence to behave well. And I'm hoping that you and I don't require that. So I cannot say to preserve what is best in the human condition, because by definition, you and I are not human. We're mutants. And I'm hoping that the village will be our way of turning our back on what our masters want us to be. Cattle. Mindless beasts, cruel and thoughtless cowards and bullies and thugs that, again, require the threat of immediate violence to behave well. As you know, I grew up amongst CIA and U.S. Army intelligence thugs, low-level bullies, cowards. And I saw firsthand how low the human being can sink. And frankly, I've seen that same condition, that same mindset grow and expand to encompass the entire world, at least the Western world. Thankfully, I don't know much about Asia. Um, I guess I don't know much about Asia because I'm sort of hoping that they're a little better than we are. I just don't see a choice. We need the village. We need it now. Whether you believe in the dead brown dwarf star that's about to flip this world end for end as part of the natural cycle of life, whether it's the next ice age that's already started, whether it's the endless wars and we're now in Another one, the Black Messiah has now got us at war with Libya. Whether it's the harp weapon that's going to burn us all in a cinder as a sacrifice to bring their Satan, their God, back to Earth. It doesn't matter. It's time to run and hide. We won't even get into what the radiation from Japan is going to do. Now, to begin with, the village will be run as a very public, very open, destination resort, an ecotourism resort, with a, with a sustainable working above organic farm, a conference center, a film festival, skiing, hiking, all those fun things that we do when we have money and time. And when we don't have the money, we borrow it from the bankers who've stolen our future in the first place. But it would be nice to have fun. I don't think I've ever actually had fun. Oh, anyway. But the moment the event occurs, we will close our doors. We will vanish. We will disappear. Now, we briefly chatted about how to cull herds in a very deliberate and very fun way. Fun being the job we seem, the joy we seem to have in seeing other people kill. At least the 98% seem to really enjoy it. I mentioned uh, in the last episode my German friend, who had also been lured to New Zealand to his doom asked me what could be done to make New Zealand the paradise we were told it was. And I had several thoughts. One of them was financial. We could go in, we could buy uh, interest in several of the major corporations, at least enough controlling interest, and set a moral example. And of course that was uh, financially impossible and just frankly stupid. And my other only thought was an army would have to come in, the Chinese army, since New Zealand falls under the Chinese sphere of influence, and there's lots of Chinese investment in New Zealand. For example, a Hong Kong company owns New Zealand's electrical infrastructure. I mean, what fool sells his spine to a foreigner? Without electricity, which is the spine of any country, you're doomed. So anyway, an army would have to invade New Zealand, take control. They'd have to invade, they'd have to seize control of the government, nationalize the corporations, and then investigate, put on trial, and then publicly execute those responsible for the current state of affairs 
in the country. I don't think the Chinese are going to bother, frankly, because it's not, again, financially a viable uh, solution, because I'm sure there's many Chinese companies that are uh, writing off their losses in New Zealand so they can offset their capital gains and their real investments. But the other day, you and I were chatting about violence equals civilization, and how the 98% the cattle require the immediate threat of violence in order to behave like well people. That's why I begin to refer to you and I as mutants. We don't seem, I hope, to need the immediate threat of violence to behave like human beings, behave what human beings should be. So I'm hoping you and I fall into that category. And I mentioned the uh, freeway shootings back in Hollywood many years ago, and I remember the, that time with great fondness because all of a sudden Hollywood was calm. It was peaceful. There were good manners that suddenly appeared in Hollywood because people were afraid of being shot dead in their cars when they behaved normally, badly, being themselves. And how suddenly, just for a very, very brief moment in time, Los Angeles was a nice place to live. So for me, the freeway shootings didn't last nearly long enough. And of course, the impression was over as soon as people were stopped being shot. People were terrified into behaving more. Amazing. And so I thought that to change New Zealand into that picture book culture we were all sold on, you would just need to hire a really good ex-U.S. military sniper, a person trained to kill without thought, without mercy, without a single qualm. In other words, a typical U.S. Uh, special operations Marine. A guy who can kill you from 300 yards with a sniper rifle and a silencer, and then go have a cup of coffee and uh, chat with his mom. Uh, I personally know that there were teams of snipers on the roofs in New Zealand and uh, that they were targeting people in the street for practice. I saw a couple of them a couple of times. I know because one of them had a bead on me one day. And being New Zealanders, they, in their tremendous arrogance, they thought that they were invisible as they were standing on top of this building in their black-on-black -black, you know, commando ninja outfit and the black uh, hood over their face and their long black sniper rifle with the long black silencer. And he's pictured against a blue sky with white fluffy clouds. So I'm looking up as I'm walking down the street and there's this guy, a New Zealand sniper, dumber than dirt, standing with his sniper rifle pointed at me. And by that time, I didn't give a damn. I said, shoot me, you'd be doing me a favor. So, uh, again, the idea of uh, snipers in New Zealand, apparently, is not that alien. So my thought is, you hire this, uh, well, a good U.S. military sniper, not a New Zealander, and once a year, every 12 months, they would target a New Zealand manager, some, pardon me, some asshole, some typical New Zealand monster, and shoot him in the head, 12 of them, from a distance, 300 yards. Our guys are real good at that. And then just leave the body in the street as a message to other horrible, moronic, vicious managers. The message, of course, is behave well or you'll be next. Uh, do that once a year and you will see utopia pretty much overnight. I'd, I'd say give it three years just to be safe. And again, leaving bodies in the street as a message is an old mafia slash CIA thing. It's the same group of guys. Leave a message that nobody can argue with. The message is behave or you're next. Yeah, I'd pretty much guarantee that within three years you would be living in Eden. Now, you could stop this shooting of vicious, sadistic, brutal, idiotic managers and politicians for a while, but then, just, in just like it happened in Hollywood, you will see the old habits start up again almost immediately, at which point you will have to hire another sniper. And I'm not talking about a hitman. This is not a mob war. This is not a CIA, CIA operation to overthrow a government and put a U.S. puppet in power. This is a fundamental change in a culture. The message is behave the way you behave, the way you want your children, or you should want your children to grow up. Be the person you always hoped you would be, and you will see a change. And I'm guessing, and it's only a guess, well, it's more like a hope, that if this went on for a few generations, you might actually see everyone in New Zealand all of a sudden being like us, mutants, because only the mutants would stay. 
frankly, the levels of violence in New Zealand are off the charts, and, and, and as always, Satan worship is behind it all. Just for fun, if you can think that violence is fun, um, look up something called the Mongrel Mob. It's a very large and very powerful and totally, quote-unquote, uncontrolled gang of the lowest level intelligence you've ever imagined. Kind of reminds me of the, of the uh, street thugs I grew up with. And they rule the people of New Zealand with fear. You never hear about them, of course. But if you watch them, and they'll actually pose on videos and brag about their gang, and you can find these on YouTube, the mongrel mob. And just watch what they do, and they are the lowest form of Satan worshippers possible. They'll actually perform, as I say, their normal gang rituals on video. They'll pose for pictures. They're that stupid. And you will see what Satan, if she exists or not, thinks of us. And these mongrel mob, they rule New Zealand. But why? You know, New Zealand has police. They have an army. The rulers of New Zealand, whomever they might be, could wipe out these thugs in a few days. I mean, they've got a, a military. But the mongrel mob serves a purpose. They instill fear in the cattle. And you'll see, you will see the same kind of low-level satanic worship in U.S.-based television evangelists. But the trick here is you have to find the unedited video feeds that are not shown in the USA. You have to find the unedited video feeds that are shown in foreign countries. And you will see the same kind of mongrel mob, Satan worship kind of event that so-called Christian ministers are doing on stage in public. These ministers will be led around on the stage wearing dog collars, led by a leash by a beautiful woman, crawling on all fours, and they're barking like dogs. Now, if you look hard, you can find these videos online. I could tell you what passes for violence in New Zealand, especially against animals and children. Seems that to New Zealanders, animals and children are the same thing. And it includes ritual abuse. In this particular case that I'm thinking of, of is brothers and sisters, as the mother and the father and the cousins look on. One little girl, and this actually made the papers in New Zealand, normally these things never do. So figure if one made it into the newspaper, a thousand didn't. One little girl, mercifully, Thank the goddess, she finally just died in hospital. She was being tortured by her older brothers. She was left on the roof, she was hung on a clothesline, she was put in a clothes dryer and was spun like wet blankets. And those are the things that they talked about. I can't imagine what else they did to her. And as I say, finally God granted her mercy on her little soul and she finally just died. Her brothers, her mother, her father, her cousins, all those who stood by, and watched her being tormented, and she was maybe five years old. So I sympathize with this little child. She was tormented in ways that were all too familiar to me. And all these creatures are members of the mongrel mob. And who went to jail? The brothers. The rest of the families complained about this, and you know how they complained? How they protested in court? The family? They stood in court, and they barked like dogs. This actually made the papers. As I say, most of these crimes never do. And the barking like dogs? See, the Satan worshippers were nothing but beasts, were cattle. The Satan worshipper wants to reduce us to the lowest form we can achieve. And so the mongrel mob in New Zealand, they bark like dogs. Somehow I'm sort of glad that uh, I was driven out of New Zealand. And so, you know, I'm asking you, are you prepared to cull our own herds? I am. I'd rather not kill anyone. Personally, I think we should run and hide. If you're in with me on this concept, start raising cash. Get over to Europe. Let's talk. Our herds will start culling themselves. When the event occurs, but the problem is it's going to be the strong and the savage and the cruel who will win. They always do, because the good and the kind and the caring will die, unless they are also smart, and unless they are also hiding, unless they're living in the real world, hopefully, you and I are living in the real world. I hope, for all our sakes, that includes both you and me. 
For all of us here at the 2012fad.com, this is Charlie Bluehorn, wishing you a really good day and reminding you, please, keep a good thought. The 2012 Fad is brought to you by Coffee and Blood, Love Letters Between the Dead, a series of five erotica horror novels about a fallen angel finding his way back to regain his own soul, and how the CIA war against the human race. Their black magic captures and traps him in the body of a mind-controlled slave designed to hunt down and to kill their god, their Satan.